The TK Kirkland Show. Yeah. Trying to save you. Yeah. If somebody use your time, make sure they pay you. Money. Pay attention, really listen. I hope you understand. Yeah. Execute your vision, go and get it. Be a man. Be a man. Save your money, motherfucker, for another day. day. We got the book and the album on the fucking way. way. This generation is full of hate. Full of hate. Always wearing what the next man make. They, they never want to see the next man make no, it. 2018, let's have a gangster conversation. Uh, like how to treat a woman. Take care of your kids. Gotta take responsibility for what you did. I do it to inspire. Take your mind a little higher. Like her name on a degree. Not her name on a flyer. Yeah, boss moves. We just doing what a boss do. We all now and we off you. It's true. true. The TK Kirkland Show. show, show, show. What's going on, sir? What's going on, Playboy? No, I'm just got finished getting some uh, field work in. Okay, what you so, training for? I play football. I, you know, I played in college and I've um, been playing arena for the last couple months now. You know, just pushing uh-huh. to play that for something. Yes, sir. All right, well, get your breath and, and stand still so the people <laughs> can hear you and all that good shit. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, what position you play? Uh, defensive back. Defensive back? Yes, sir. Are yeah, you cracking them all? Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's my okay. that's my main mo. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to, I used to be in my position back in high school and pop one. Oh, yeah. I used to be um, defensive end and um, fullback and defensive uh-huh. back. You played that at Snyder because I know you from Jersey City. Yeah, at Snyder, I I was playing for Snyder. Then what uh-huh. was crazy was a um, high school buddy of mine named James Brown. That was his name, James Brown. Um, was a great football player. And on one day, you know how when you practice with no pads on just the helmet? Yeah. We just go through plays, and two of the guys broke his leg. Uh, to me, I felt oh, like man. it was on purpose, yo. And the school oh. didn't take care of him. Like, you know, insurance purposes, et cetera. He wound up getting um, left behind in school one grade. And I stopped playing football. So I just kept running track. So, I went, yeah, I went to Snyder. Oh, man. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what turned they, they the always have your way. That's what made me yeah, stop playing always, football. Yeah, they always have a good. Uh, as far as I've as far as I've been aware, they always had a, a good uh, track program. Always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're running for your damn life up in Jersey City. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, so talk to me, fam. What you what's going what's on your mind? So you know, I've been um, you know. About a year out from college, been uh, you know, of course, doing the sports thing, and uh, through my three years um, after I transferred to uh, to uh, um, Rutgers University down here in Jersey. Um, yeah, I never Rutgers. Um, oh yeah, um, I met a girl there. You know, at, at our first glance, it wasn't you know, it wasn't like a, you know, I was you know, off to trying to get her or nothing like that. We just got real cool. Um, uh-huh. you know, really had a lot of a lot of the same com- common interests and everything, and you know. Started hanging out and maybe a month or two in, we started things started getting physical, like just really out the blue. But it, it gradually right. got there, but you know, got it got physical. Um, she definitely wasn't, I you know, my ideal physical thing. Okay. But again, on on the other on the other tip, that's what we definitely connected at. And um, so throughout the time, you know, she went through her growth. Um, I, <laughs> I always laugh, and prior to me really. Really hearing the you know the whole your whole who raised you uh the whole you ra- who raised you theory and everything like that whole right. thing prior to that I would always ask her like why why would your parents send you out here not knowing how to do certain things not how, not knowing how to pick up a prescription from the from the pharmacy or you know different things so right you know, different life different life experiences uh you know they, and and the freedom to to grow are those things that you know what I'm saying they they build you for later on if you don't have that you're really coming out. You know, handicapped. So yeah, that's right. You know, I would, you know, talk to her and, you know, be a real friend, giving her the constructive criticism. You know, what I'm saying that she would ask for, and I would always ask her, "You want, you want me to be a friend, or you want me to kind of just listen to you? Right. You, want to, you want me to give you some advice? You want me to, answer, uh, you know, to just listen to you? Right. Either or, more so, more so the advice. But um, so we, you know, things got they got a little more serious between us. You know, more on the on a lower end. Not so much, you know, everybody big on social media, posting everything. Like we would just, we would be friends, but, you know, the whole benefits thing. And for me, it was, you know, I'm in college, so 
I'm not really, I'm trying to make sure I know what's going to happen, you know, when I leave out, when right. I, when I, you know what I'm saying, once I graduate, still, you know, if you, you know about the college sports thing, college athletics, so they're time consuming. So I'm, you know, I'm consumed with that and then mm-hmm. wanting to have that desire to play professionally. So it's like, you know, pushing, pushing, pushing. But at the end of the day, I would always tell her, like, look, you know, we, we need to focus on our thing. You focus on your thing, I focus on my thing. At the end of the mm-hmm. day, if everything's good, we can bring that together for that real thing later on. But I'm not stressing it right now for right. a quote-unquote relationship, you know what I mean? So that was always my whole thing. So she would have her, uh, you know, times where she would, you know, I would call her, I call them episodes where it's like she would want to know, what are we doing? And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, would, I would get a little frustrated, but understanding the other woman, I understand these needs and desires, you're seeing other females around you, your sister got married, whatever the case may be. Right, right. You know, you, you, you need to slow, just slow down. You, you're in a good space. No kids, no crazy responsibility except for what's right mm-hmm. in front of, you know, school and everything. All but, right. you know, that, that stretched on up until of lately and i say maybe Sunday, this past Sunday. No, excuse me, last Friday, you know, my bir- I had my 25th birthday, so enjoyed that. Um, went out with my, you know, with some friends of mine and, and, and celebrated a graduation for someone else that same mm-hmm. day. Met a girl at the at this club out here in Jersey, you know, got, you know, hooked up with her that night and, you know, didn't have sex nothing, just hooked up, you know, I was at the club right. and everything. And then that next morning, I think I was on my way to uh, maybe a friend's, a friend's house, uh, the, the friend from school who I had, you know, basically been, you know, been close with or whatever, but we just kept it, you know, that, that distance. But she, you know, sent me a long, drawn-out message with, you know, how she needs to kind of distance herself from me so that she could make sure she, she's where she needs to be because of she felt like she made made me a priority in her life with, you know, trying to be in a relationship with me, you know what I'm saying? And even even though along the way, I would tell her, like, look, do this, do that, do that. Don't worry about me. Focus on this, focus on that. And she's benefited off of those things. Had a couple of jobs coming out of, you know, graduating from college. She went out, you know, got them. And now she, she's saying, okay, I need to strap down more. But now she's completely cut off 100% of communication with me. To me, it's like, I, I, you know, you do what you got to do. But, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, that's... I'm I'm a handle I have to handle. You know, if we talk again later on, that's fine. So right. You know, I, it, it is what it is. I definitely have you know major love for the girl, and she has a lot of definitely has a lot of traits that later on, when that time comes, when I'm where I need to be, when I have that, you know, that the money I want to have in the bank, where I can handle what I need to handle and do things and go places, that's fine. But mm-hmm. until then, I'm you know, I'm not I'm not stressing it. I let and, you know I'm an avid definitely an avid listener avid, you know, um, supporter of you, and I, I listened to what you're saying. It's just like, yo, I knew I wasn't crazy. These things that I, I already felt, it was just confirmed to hear right. you say the things you had, things you said, because there's nothing new under the sun. You've seen, probably, you've seen, if not all of, but the same things that uh, I'm going through with any other young man or woman going through. You've seen it already, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, right. That's, that's been my whole thing, and then, you know, I, I got to handle what I got to handle. Yeah, so basically, so you asking me, so is, are you doing the right thing, not being in a relationship and letting her go? Yeah, basically, basically, yeah. What do you want to do? Like, how do you feel? I mean, I feel, I feel like with this situation, I'm, I understand what she want to do, but it's like you know, you don't have the cut full of communication off, but that's what you do. That's what you need to do. But at the mm-hmm. same time, I also have, I also have other women popping up out the woodwork. Like, I'm at the gym Monday, and a young lady approached me, and was, you know, for trying to find out if I was, you know, if I was take, spoken for or talking to anybody or anything, and it's just like, nah, but I told her, no, nah, and, you know, I, I got a number, and we probably going to, you know, go out, definitely do that. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just, How I'm so getting... far in 25, just turned 25. Oh, yeah. How old is this young lady? She's 20, she just turned 23. Oh, man. See, yeah. let me tell you about this 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 world. See, we, we're raised to think we have to get married immediately. We got to start a family. And all that's wrong, fam. What you're doing is the right thing. See, a man has to have something to offer a woman. Exactly. Period. Bottom line ain't no maybes, 
Ain't no, I think I'm going to get it. You got to have it. You got to have it for mental peace as a man and peace of mind as a man. You got to have a car. You got to have money bank so you can feel good about yourself. You want to, you want to get, a man got to feel good about stuff. You can't be a, a worm or a bitch nigga acting like you got a girlfriend. You know, to have a girlfriend, to have a woman, you got to have paper. And you ain't got to be rich. You just got to be able to do the normal things. Cable. Can you put food in the refrigerator? Can you take your girl out to eat? Can you take trips once or twice a year? If a man is in a relationship, he can't do that, then he shouldn't be in a relationship. Because what the uh, fuck, y'all? Just, you just getting to meet the girl, take a number, and just talk to her all the time? You fuck, you, you <laughs> might run into your cousin, you bring her to your mama house. What the fuck could the person be in a relationship? <laughs> exactly. You know, so what you're doing is right, and and never forget the value of who you are. You date, yes, you don't slip up, and none of any of these women, and fuck up your life. I was in the barbershop today. And my barber's um, cousin's son had a basketball scholarship, fam, full ride. Oh, man. And got a girl pregnant a month before he graduated. Oh. I'm in the barber's house. I didn't even my damn family member, and I'm sick. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, man. Now, I had to look. I had to. It was my junior year of high school. I had the same type of slip up with, with my ex girlfriend. That's the last time I had a had a girlfriend was uh, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Had that slip up and that that stress going through that and family issues, you know that, that whole that stress situation. I I guarantee myself I will never go through that ever again. I watched. You got a pregnant? Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't wish that on no young man. Especially oh, if your money ain't right. Nope. Oh, no, no. money ain't right? Yeah. That was a horrible I feeling. A, I had a friend of mine in my, I think our last year of college, he had got, and within the same semester of school, got two girls pregnant. And At the college? Get, in college. At the same damn school? At the same school. One of them didn't even go to our school, but one of them, you know, she was right away somewhere down south somewhere, but he had got linked up with her somehow, and then, you know, She's been kicking and kind of coming up here and there and all that. He went down. Before we know it, she's talking about she's pregnant. Maybe a couple of months, maybe a month or two later, a girl at school, she's pregnant. And had an operation for both of them. It's like, oh, man. Oh, they got Watch him go through it. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. He was stressed the fuck out, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That school stuff coming up. I felt bad for him. He, he, looked, he just looked. You could see, like, she was going through something. And then once you let us know, it's like, oh, man. Uh, yeah, see, that's know. the thing about self-control. Yeah. These guys, when you're in school, girls, too. You, you stay home with mommy, and then you go to college. First thing you're thinking about is fucking. You ain't really thinking about education. <laughs> you think about who you can fuck when you get in college. Ooh, I'm going to be tearing some pussy up. Girls are <laughs> like, ooh, I'm going to get me some dick. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. But like I said in one of my shows, CYA cover your ass. Oh yes, yes sir. Because I you know. don't want you don't want it to come back and bite your ass. See, you got lucky and he got lucky, but we don't want to damage our women oh, sir. by getting them right. pregnant. See, abortions down the line, not all of them, but some of them. That's how our women get cervical cancer. Uh huh. You understand what I'm saying? It's how they get cervical yeah. cancer, my man. They, it, there's so many different things our women go through. Black, white, respect, they're all our women, regardless of what color. And we got to stop it. And men got to be in control of where they put their motherfucking dicks. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we see a fat, juicy ass. Ooh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and that's the setup. So you yeah. go chase the ass. The girl likes you like her, but your priorities are wrong. You ain't got no money. You ain't got a car. Still with your mom, still going to school, still paying tuition. And what's crazy is 25. Yeah. You ain't even seen the world yet. 
No, nope. I, I went on my first flight in in college playing football. That's that was the first time I ever took a flight was in college playing football. Yeah, man, you ain't saying shit yet, brother. No sir. And what state <laughs> you in? Oh, uh, Jersey. Man, wait till you go to London. Oh man. Wait till you go to Dubai. Turks of Caicos. You ain't even been to Miami yet, nigga. Oh, I've been there. I went, I went there last spring break. That was me. That's another thing. Like just going out to something like that, where they where they out there like that, just about twenty uh, three sixty five, and it's just like it's out there. I'm not I'm not gonna mm-hmm. lock down lock down that. Not unless for me, not unless I really feel like it's it's worth it. I don't feel like it's worth it, especially at your age. Ain't nothing like, worth it. No. Nah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Yeah, your life is to achieve, have accomplishments, a degree, a good job. What have you accomplished? If you haven't accomplished anything, why are you going to get a girlfriend? What kind right. of fuck can you offer? Answer it. What can you offer a woman if you don't have no accomplishments? Nothing. Just, just possibly some dick. That's about it. And there ain't, ain't much. There ain't much, y'all. Okay, I can text you every day. I can, I can call you. I can't take you nowhere. <laughs> we can catch the subway to to Newark. We can catch the subway <laughs> to Times Square, but we could walk around in yeah, the city. Cool. I can't buy you nothing. <laughs> yeah. That's just that's my main focus. And I again like I said, I, I listen to to your podcast and, and Get up on any interviews. Anytime I see an interview come up, let me see what let me see what we talking about. What type of knowledge and gems you dropping? So you better make sure you get that album when it come out in October. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah! Listen to what I'm oh, telling you, fam. This motherfucker album is that cold. <laughs> I can't drop the jewels about it yet. Yeah, but you'll start hearing stuff around October first. Mm. And I'm the album drop October 26th. And you got to come to the show. Um, I, I, I'm on yeah, the Broadway. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. Cause I, I like your reservations it. soon because you know that's going to sell out. Oh, yeah. I already, I already said as soon as, as soon as it drops, I'm definitely getting my ticket and plenty of couple people with me. If, I, if they come in, they need to come. I've, yeah, been telling, I've been telling people, especially telling my boys. One of my boys, he wouldn't got... Got married back ooh, maybe four years ago. He divorced. He's my age. No, nah, he's my age. Married two kids, but it's like yo, you. you Is he happy? Like, like he. I look. I, I, at the outside looking in, regardless of what he say, I don't feel like. I don't feel like he is. Right. Because so here's and, the thing. What I say is just the blueprint. There are exceptions. Yeah. Some people can make it. What my goal in life is to do is to protect y'all to make sure that you have a great life. I don't want you to have to struggle. I don't want you to have to get a divorce. You marry this woman, and the very next day you walk down the street and you meet a, 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 the bitch of your dreams. <laughs> You're like, fuck. <laughs> and that's, that's how I feel about the girl, this girl from the, from the gym. Like, she, like when I tell it ain't even like I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm about to marry this man. Just the fact that if I had a girl and I didn't, I wasn't fully, if I fell into that whole, that whole, you know, the, the getting the ultimatums and, and the pressure of it and got a girlfriend and was like, ah, I don't really want a girlfriend right now, but I'm going to do it anyway. Like a lot of people right. I know. Meeting this girl at the gym, I was kicking myself in the tail. I'm just like, oh, man. Was she fine? Oh, man. The only, the only, she's fine. I can't, I can't get, she's fine. The only, okay. She got two kids, but she's fine. Right. I'm the goal of the day. See, now that, see how, see, life, relations like a Rubik's Cube. All the colors got to fit together. Let me tell you what I mean. She's fine, but she got two kids. Right. Now, you don't need that in your life. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping my fucking real. Yep, not at all. You in school. You still don't have nothing to offer her. Oh, no, no, I, I graduated. I graduated. I graduated last year. But you ain't got 25000 in the motherfucking bank. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, nah. Okay, at least thank you for being honest. <laughs> you don't have 25000 in the bank, so you can't offer. See, a woman will say to you, 
oh, I don't need no person to help me raise my kids. I got it. They, they father take care of them. But a real man knows that when he meets a woman that got kids, those his kids too. Because you can't come in a house and just be bringing the mom or something and you don't bring the kids nothing. You can't come in the house and you went shopping and you ain't getting nobody nothing. You fuck around and get jumped. <laughs> Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. since you don't have no children, you want to start, if, if you can, with your own family. Now, right. there are exceptions to the rules. <clears throat> She's a great woman. She brings a lot to the table. She's in a position to help you get a better job, help do certain things. Then you have to weigh, like, oh, shit, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I got to fuck with her. Now, something like that, you have to take advantage of. So to the people listening around the world and who listen to the show, I'm not saying meeting a woman is bad with kids. I'm saying if it makes sense, then handle it. But if it doesn't make sense, don't waste her time. Don't waste your time unless you all know. You're just going to fuck, have a good time, and go on about your business. But to the gentlemen and to the women listening, if that's all you want, protect yourself so nobody else gets any more babies. Because this child support shit is one of the coldest setups known to man. Like I used to, I used to, I used to always think pussy wasn't powerful. You know, I'm a street nigga. <laughs> You know, like, you know, these niggas tripping off pussy niggas, these bitch ass right. niggas. This is how I'm talking in life. <laughs> like, these niggas are some bitches. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gay. Yeah, I want, but, I, want, I want some pussy too. I want to treat a woman good too. But I ain't getting caught up like these niggas getting caught up. So I'm driving a day, and I hear they got Morgan Freeman. Did what? you see that on the news? No. Morgan Freeman is up on charges. Eight women came forward on Morgan Freeman. So one of my friends like, oh, that's wrong. I don't believe it. But here's my story in life and to everybody listening. See, no matter what you think a man is, you don't know who he is once those doors are closed. So you can never really justify Vouch for a man or woman once they leave your eyes. We don't know what Morgan Freeman. We know we see him on TV. He right. just sees that, but psh, we don't know what the fuck he does when he's off the screen. Right. A lot of people didn't know Whitney Houston was gay. A lot of people didn't know Whitney Houston was uh, ever that she was drugged. But back in the day, you didn't know that. But Whitney Houston, before she married Bobby Brown, she was bisexual. No one in a million years thought Tiger Woods was a player. And when Tiger Woods, <laughs> am I right or wrong? Nice, innocent-looking guy? You didn't think Tiger yeah. Woods was a player? That nigga got busted. This nigga had more bitches than Hugh Hefner. <laughs> am I right or wrong? All right. This nigga right. had more bitches than Hugh Hefner, yo. <laughs> Yeah, more females than golf clubs. Right. All, of, all the names that came up in there. So, so my point is, you don't know. Just like people, when you're in Hollywood and you travel, people say, oh, is so-and-so gay? And I was like, I don't know. But if someone tells you, yeah, that means they was in the room. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was in the room. I wasn't in the room, nope. I wasn't in the motherfucking room. So when people say, oh, yeah, that, that nigga, that nigga was in the room. <laughs> it's crazy. So life is like a minefield. You got to be careful where you walk, what you say, who you meet. When you meet a woman, you have to ask these questions. And remember what I'm about to tell you. Is it worth my time? Sure. Second question. Is it worth is it worth my time? <laughs> Third question, is it worth my motherfucking time? 
These are things you have to ask yourself. Don't waste your time, fam. Stay focused on your your football. Stay focused on getting a good job. Stay focused on traveling. Stay focused on getting money in the bank. I want you to qualify. You know, I talk about a nigga got qualified to be in a relationship. And so you get 25000 or more in the bank, you're not qualified. So you're really wasting a woman's time. Right. Remember, you got a, a real, when you got your shit right, yo, guess what? You send a woman flowers. Now, sometimes that woman may not like you. Sometimes that girl may not like her. And that's, you got to be man enough to accept that. You know, some niggas are called, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, that's not how you treat a lady. That's not how you treat a woman. No matter how ratchet or sweet she is, if she don't want you, she don't want you. But a man, after hearing what I'm telling you, you never, ever disrespect her. You say, it's okay, I understand, I wish you the best. Because guess what? You're going to meet another bitch. <laughs> you said the little cop. You're going to meet somebody else. Do. And the women are going to meet somebody else if they can't find a guy that they like. You will meet somebody else. And that's the point that I'm making. I'm reading the paper. I'm traveling. I'm reading all these horror stories. Niggas killing each other over a bitch. Nah, man. What the fuck is going on? Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Niggas killing the bitch because she sucked another nigga's dick. Nigga, fellas, who listening to the show. Take this shit on the chin and keep it moving. Prison ain't no place for it for us, yo. And see, everybody gets in trouble and they want people to march, but once you get in that system, see when I was coming and I was coming up and getting in trouble, I had papers, so I could I could fight my cases. But when I read these stories and what they're doing to people, they are really messing people up in the system. And then people get mad when they say, oh, they didn't do this to the black people, to the white people. The goal in life is not to get in trouble because there's no black Cory Booker, Jesse Jackson, Obama, whoever can't help you. Oh. Jay-Z, none of them motherfuckers. T.K. Kirkland, none of us can help you. Oh. You can't get a call for can get one for you. Yeah, we go on these podiums. We could go on World Star. We could say whatever the fuck we want. Don't white people don't give a fuck. What? They got the power, my nigga. Oh. And if we ain't trying to change a law, so we can watch all we want. It's to you gotta have a law to change shit. You gotta have a law. And the way you do a law, you do a petition, you get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people to sign the petition and you vote that shit into law. That's how you win. If we ain't doing shit about the laws, ain't nothing we can do, yo. The fuck can we do? I don't give a fuck how much you march. We ain't going. We ain't tough enough to get in no motherfucking van and go up to the White House and crack Trump over the head. We ain't cold enough to get in a van and go to NRA and find the president to tell this motherfucker to make changes. All right. The police still killing us. They've been killing us for years. They kill they kill the white people. White people killing each other. They go on the news, have a press conference, and these powerful people will let you have your moment. They'll they'll let you be on the news, they'll let you talk, and they know three weeks from now you will not be paying attention to this shit. Right. Just like the Parkland Parkland shooting in Florida and those girls and everything went to the White House and had yeah, their yeah. moment. Okay, the motherfucking white people know. Okay, we we give them we give them their moment. Then the other white dude a couple of weeks ago, last week, shot up everybody. Yeah, down in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 
Now, you don't hear them do that much no more, but they had their moment. Now, it's just, it's just, they sweep it under the rug, and we're here another one. They've been talking about stopping this shit for over 10 years. And you mean to tell me that this white boy who was coming into the school with a trench coat, you ain't stopped this motherfucker? Um, I don't give a fuck. It's hot in the motherfucker. You got a trench coat on? Nigga, you ain't coming in here? (laughs) (laughs) A CD? I'm a security guy on a CD. What's under the coat? Right? I'm stopping that motherfucker 20, 15 feet away from school. If I see him... (laughs) They say war every day. Well, every day I'm going to ask that nigga, what the fuck? Matter of fact, you can't wear the coat near school. <laughs> and these kids got to start paying attention to these alarms. You pull the fuck a fire alarm, kids today got to be like, I ain't moving. Oh, no. I just I just made the mark. I, I, I'm going 93. I just made the mark of the common sense. Because now, if they have it in the phone, Hey, that's really all it. They ain't in the phones and social media. They're not really paying attention. I watch them around here now, and it's just like, dang, like, anything can have no street smart, no just common sense of what's going on. Right. It's just that awareness, and it's, it's, it's lacking. Yeah, you know me being in high school and that motherfucker long ring. I'm like, I'm <laughs> not my, until I see some flames, <laughs> I ain't moving. The teacher going to have to come get me. Yeah, come, yeah. I I'm, I I got a, a a delay. That long thing, I'll leave in about thirty minutes. <laughs> but I ain't walking out this motherfucker door until somebody tell me it's clear. Or oh, I see some flames oh, around this bitch. Yeah, I man, my, but, I saw my business, man. Yeah, she's Same spreading thing, the word because this TK Kirkland show is really taking the country by storm. I'm so excited, yeah. like the numbers on this shit. Is insane, and I just really appreciate brothers like yourself and the women around the world, and just everybody who has just tuned in from France to Germany to Russia to Alaska. It's just, it's just a really, really awesome feeling. I just want everybody who's listening to the show to get ready because every year, if you watch me, I elevate my game. You know, from the Breakfast Club on, like I've elevated now on my own label. I own my own production company, shoot my own Netflix specials, got some great things getting ready to happen. Sure. But after October, when I dropped the book, when I dropped the special, when I dropped the gangster conversation, <laughs> so I'm going to say, is that, is that tight? So you just put the word out, family, keep um, telling everybody about the show. Um, please stay focused and and yes, there's some beautiful women out here in the world. Dog, I remember a woman in Detroit told me years ago. She said, "I feel I just I said I could never be a man." And I said, "Why?" She said, "Because there's just so many pretty women in the world. Like the temptation is insane, and that's true. And that's mm-hmm. why men have to have discipline in order to achieve their goals. You got to have discipline." And that's the thing I'm going to stress as for as long as I can. You have to have discipline. And if you listen to what I'm telling you, you'll get everything you want out of life, fam. Sure. All right? Sure. So the fans around the world, from Jamaica to motherfucking Turks and Caicos to Cancun to um, Cuba to all the way to motherfucking Hawaii, you know, keep listening to the show. Keep supporting one another. Keep uplifting one another. Do the best that you can. That's all you can do. Take one day at a time. And don't take life too seriously because you're never going to get out of it alive. You know who said that, yo? Ah, nah. Bucks Bunny, my nigga. (laughs) I saw it on a cartoon when I was a kid. That nigga said, don't take life too seriously. Cause you're never gonna get out of alive from the great man Buck's <laughs> motherfucking buddy. I'll never get that as long as I live. <laughs> See you in October. Get your tickets for the Breakfast Club presents T to the motherfucking K at Caroline, October 26, 27. If you miss it, that's your motherfucking fault. Cause I told you, motherfuckers, in May. Yep. Talk to you soon, family. Take care of yourself. Stay focused. You hear me? Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, okay my man. God bless. Talk to you.
God bless. One. This episode of the TK Kirkland Show was produced by Chris Thomas, executively produced by Charlemagne the God. This is an official Loudspeakers Network production. Speakers Network production. Speakers Network production. Speakers Network production. Speakers Network production.